start so and for the most part everything's based on density of materials but a uh, brief history electric guitar is the main like people think or a lot of what I've learned we go Fender built one called the log back in 1939 1940s and basically he strapped some amplifiers to a block of wood and strung some strings on it and that was his electric guitar and before, but before that, there was actually a guy, I think his name was Poodle Ramek from Audiobox. And he had built the first electric guitar in 1935. They didn't really say the materials. Anyway, getting down to materials. All right, so the main thing, electric guitars, a lot of it, a lot of people talk about tone in the body. There are a lot of woods for the body that can be used. A, Cheap one that, or one that's used in a lot of cheap guitars because it's readily available and it's not a giant trade off, but it's basswood. It's soft, so like tone response isn't as great, things aren't as sharp, it isn't white, it's bright. Next, or another main one is mahogany, I know is used a lot. It's uh, more uniform and a little more dense, so tone response is a little more, it's clear. But, like, I could spend forever going through all the woods and talking about their qualities, but like there's basswood, alderwood, swamp ash, mahogany, walnut, koa, carina, soft maple, hard maple, spruce, and lacewood. And those are all used for um, different body types, some for acoustics, some for electronics. Now, they actually have uh, different ways of building the body. Like when someone says it's a maple top, it means usually take a mahogany or a basswood body and they put a maple layer of wood over this. And what they're trying to do by that is you basically you're using the maple wood along with the basswood to get a combination of tones and good one is the uh, lacewood. Lacewood structure or er, lacewood structure is different in that it's not uniformly dense. There are spots in it that are softer than others. And so you have both a combination of like good low frequency response and good high frequency response. And so to even it out they'll put a maple top over top of it. But that's, yeah, it's just the bodies. Yeah, rosewood is used most commonly for the fretboard simply because rosewood is very oily. Just because it's frequently touched by humans and they leave oil on it, it's uh, best used for fretboards. There are a few other, a few other fretboard woods. Maple, ebony, and pau ferro. ferro. So, in order, rosewood is probably going to produce your lowest, fattest tone on a uh, fretboard. Maple, since it's dense, it's a very bright. And then ebony has, ebony is like a crisper form of uh, maple, but it, uh, it has some of the tendencies of rosewood. And then Pau Ferro is a, but it's between ebony, or between, yeah, between ebony and rosewood, and it has a very good system. So something interesting, I guess this is actually going to be related to our group meetings, is the pickups. That was probably the most interesting part to me, was how pickups are done and why pickups sound a certain way. So what? What's, what's the pickup here? <coughs> All right, the pickup will pick, or pick up. Pickup will read magnetic frequencies from the wire because the strings actually do have mag or the strings have magnetic properties, and then the magnets, the electromagnet from the pickup reads that frequency of the wire moving. You can tell where it's moving. And the way the way pickups work, like for we were talking about winding wire, which would be insanely difficult, but the taller and thinner your pickup is, 
the brighter your sound is going to be. But the thicker you wind the pickup, the more resistance there is, and you lose treble frequencies, but you gain like volume by it. The signal stronger from the pickup. And the sing single coils are known for picking up frequencies other than just the strings. Like I know last year I was I had a cheap guitar I was using for practice so I wouldn't break it in the dorms. And I was picking up our radio station here through my amp. A little bit ridiculous. But uh, humbuckers are actually the design, or humbuckers are the pickup that came afterwards to try and reduce that. And basically what they do is one pickup, or it's actually two pickups combined. One is wound one direction and the other one is wound the other so that the frequencies will, or the sine waves will meet and cancel out. It picks up the guitar, or it actually picks up the strings obviously, but um, Humbuckers are usually a louder, much louder. They have a fatter tone, like it's lower, bassier, smoother, because usually humbuckers take up more area of the string, and so they read the string longer, or re they read more of the wave, and that's why it's uh, usually much lower, warmer sound. And then, basically pickups, the longer, or the more of the area of the string it takes up, the warmer and lower your uh, sound is actually going to be. I know I was reading some of the pickup designs. Someone tried doing one for each string with six outputs out of the guitar, and it produced a really low, warm sound, but it's not very practical. Um, then, you have the difference between passive and active pickups. Passive pickups are usually the single coils. You have some humbuckers that are passive, but passive read the signal and they just basically send it direct to the amplifier. Uh, active pickups usually require a battery of some sort and it'll amplify the signal and send it through, um, through filters to try and polish the sound because they have uh, usually have a stronger mid. Then, like playing guitar, usually you have your difference between like, picks and or yeah, pick styles people use. Usually, the thinner the pick, softer it is. That means it's not going to have as much of an attack. It's going to be a softer, lower sound. The harder uh, you. You don't want to use, use thinner picks for strong, not as strong strings. Basically, you want a really hard pick for thick strings because it, it allows you to be more concise with your playing. If your pick's soft and you're trying to play very heavy strings, you're more than like, your pick's going to flex more, and it's not going to be as effective for being accurate. Uh, there are actually, it's weird what they'll make picks out of. Like, because there's more than just regular plastic. There's your general picks that, like, the his, historic material has been celluloid. It's just simple plastic that everyone's been using. Nylon uh, is usually used for thin picks because it has, it's more flexible, it's softer. Um, there's acetyl, which is a really hard plastic but it's really, really smooth, so it glides over strings, which sounds bad, but... Um, Olten, Lexan, and Acrylic are also a few materials. They're pretty general. They're all hard. Um, metal. I've seen several metal picks. Usually a lot of people or if you're using metal picks, it's usually for finger picking, and they just have like picks that wrap around your fingers. Uh, then there's wood picks, and each wood pick, just like the bodies, the density of the wood, along with the shape and like thickness they use, all affect your sound. Like, and they have 
six different kinds of wood they actually use for these. African blackwood, bako, cabolo, lignum vitae, rosewood, and zebra wood are all different. Then there's, uh, they also make glass picks. And it's just used because it's so hard. You can make uh, thinner, well, because glass is so hard, you can make thinner picks and it wears. It's easier on the strings than a metal pick, basically. Then two other kinds of picks that I thought were very odd were new tortoise, which basically they take animal protein and they harden it and it like it has a flexible tip so it's useful. But then there's felt picks, which are usually used for like ukuleles, several layers of felt pressed together. So it's soft pick. If you were to like mix and match these materials, would that kind of cancel out the aspects of it or are you better off sort of focusing on one type of sound and well, combining materials that get you towards it? In guitar you can do whatever you want pretty much. Like since the sound you want is all relative, you have to experiment with everything. And it's just good to know kind of what materials produce what kind of sound. Like if I wanted kind of maybe a not too altered sound that's just sort of in the middle, would I get the same effect from that by using the type of wood that encourages like bassier sounds? You know, on one part of the guitar, I'm not a guitarist. So. On one part of the guitar and then one that encourages travel on another part of the guitar, better to focus on materials that just focus on kind of center sounding. Would there be a difference? Yeah, like if I wanted middle and I mixed high and low, would that be as good as mixing middle and middle? That's okay. It would probably sound a little off. It's all preference, really. Yeah. I mean, because I mean, you can have different. There's different gauge strings too, because that produce different sounds too. So I mean, if you if you got say something better for the higher tones, went with something more for the lower tones, string wise. I mean, it be it produce a different sound than if you just went straight like middle. I mean, each mi mixture creates its own sound, and you can tweak it with like the pickups, like the picks. Like if you have like the light picks, and it's generally, it's not as, uh, it's like not, it's really hard to describe. I know why you're struggling. Yeah, so well, with strings, the thicker you go, the usually the bassier, louder the response is gonna be. And like, it's why heavy metal artists will use uh, thick strings and thick picks, because you get a low sound with a fast response. Like strings, there are so many different styles because there's round wound, which means they just they wind the wire or the string. Those are the most common. Then they have flat wound. So it's almost like not it's actually like sort of like uh, the classical uh, bass strings where it's like an extra string. Well, they use different kinds of centers for it, like um, round wound are your general electric strings where they have the uh, stainless, common one stainless steel, they wind around a nickel center and for your last three strings and then the other three are thickness of the nickel string that they use. Uh, you say we have two, two single coils uh, uh, wound, wound in a different direction, mm -hmm. so, so if I have a coil pad, uh, does it matter which which uh, one is turned off? Are you like uh, like a chord pad is like I have uh, like I have I have chord books in the guitar and then you can I, switch I, them to singles. Yeah, yeah. Does, it, does it matter? Does it sound different? Uh, which uh, which one is turned off? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Notice you can flip the switch up and you can flip the switch down. And I forget which one does which, but there's one that has like a brighter sound. And there's one that does something else, but one it's a three-way it's, it's a three-way switch, and in the middle it's both both coils are on, and when you flip flip it up, it's one only one of the coils, and when you flip it down, it's the other coil. Generally, your um, it it basically turns them off. Usually, if you only have two, it'll turn the uh, if you have it flipped all the way down, it'll turn the top one off, and that's your higher end, and then your 
bottom ones usually are lower end frequencies, and that's why when we split in the middle, it uh, covers the brush range. Um, oh, okay. And then there are flat wand strings, which basically they take a round wand string and they grind it down so that it's smoother, and it just makes it easier to be played by fingers. Usually it's used for acoustics. And then there, obviously there are nylon strings and that's used for classical guitar. Fun fact for the flat wound, uh, like if anybody knows the band Cigaros, he uses uh, a bow on his guitar and you have to have flat wounds for that. Hmm. Yeah. Kind of cool. I only know that because my brother tried that on his guitar once. Uh, I think it's, it's a cello bow. It's a little yeah, FDR. Unless you want to destroy the bow. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> no, I mean, because uh, I know that uh, Jimmy Page used a baseline. Yeah, I mean, it, it's just durability, I think. Yeah, and he used to just murder it after every show. <laughs> Half the strings would be gone, man. I mean, you can see pictures of this is holding this ball. Half the strings is hanging off. Of it. <laughs> if you're on World Tour, why not bust up bows? <laughs> Bust up hands <laughs> smash them in the cup. Bust up everything. Bust up fly. You don't need to fly. But really, there and just the different materials that um, the strings are made out of. I know stainless steel were common in the '60s, like the surfing music. Those are all stainless steel strings. <laughs> all right. My friend had an electric, electric classical, um, and I was wondering, would it matter if I went out and just got, let's say, regular classical strings, or if I get a special touch put on my electric? Because personally, like, I, I prefer my classical guitar just because it's, I think it sounds better, but I don't think it would make my electric. Nylon strings wouldn't work on an electric guitar. I think, I think, a special oh, yeah, yeah, I think general classic classical acoustic guitars use uh, nylon strings. They have to have mm -hmm. the strings. Mm -hmm. This all use of keys and pickup. So it's a different way to input it. Yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot to say they're optical pickups, which use light, and they basically shoot a light beam upward at the string, and it can detect how far it's moving. But the first, the first one was made in like 1979 but they aren't very common. <laughs> Any other questions that you guys had? Good. All right.